Someone explain what the hell is going on here, quick. Well, Victor, that's what we're all trying to figure out. Oh, God, don't look at me. No one's blaming you, Luther. No, I mean, don't look at me. I'm hideous. Look, at least you're back to your old self, all right? The rest of us feel like someone injected motor oil in our veins. It's so strange, because I, for once, feel fantastic. Yeah, well, you think you got problems? Look at this. Oh, wait, wait, no, no. Oh! Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about The Umbrella Academy, season four, episode two, called Jean and Jean. Uh, and the synopsis? Uh, with their powers restored, the gang embarks on a mission to find Cy Grossman's daughter, but they soon encounter hostility in a seemingly quaint town, a quaint Christmas town. Or yeah, uh, at well, least it's town it's celebrating celebrating Christmas. Yeah. Celebrating Christmas at the right. at this point, which is so funny too, because if you watch it, and obviously you listeners have known, or you've watched it several times, just like we have, and you're like, uh, we don't really see much Gina Jean in this episode. Not, yeah, not till the end. It's 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 weird that it was that was the title, but we don't get them until the very end. So, yeah. yeah, not sure what that was about. Just another misdirect by the the writers there, but. Yeah, it was it was a very strange title, and uh, throughout the whole episode, you don't get all this. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, to me, uh, I did enjoy the episode. Uh, I loved seeing the uh, the family get their powers get <laughs> slowly as they come. You get uh, Luther coming back, waking up. With that stupid 1980s alarm clock that I have too, that goes. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I have that still too, everybody. I still own it. Uh, it it's so annoying. It, it it will just make anybody who has a hangover going, "Oh crap, turn that off." <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's there. He wakes up. He goes to work. He goes to the strip bar. And he looks a little bit bigger in the astronaut suit than he normally is. Mm-hmm. And then when he takes it off and he goes crazy and all the women go crazy, the it's like, oh my God, he's a gorilla underneath. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's a gorilla again. So we see the powers are back. So yep, or the powers at least are back. Kind of back in a, in a weird some of them have got weird different powers, a little a little slightly different. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that as we get uh, as we go through the the episode. So yeah, a little, little different, little different tweaks to their powers, but uh, uh, definitely uh, some interesting, interesting things to say about them getting their powers back. So yeah, I have to give it up to you as we were talking about before we started recording, you, uh, you called it. He did spike their, their drinks, which uh, I, I was uh, kind of like, well, why would they, why would he take the extra shot there at the end? If, if it wasn't, and and that's the, uh, like we talked about before we started recording, it bugs me a little bit. The writers did that. They threw him in taking that separate shot there at the end, just to kind of throw us off, you know, cause I'm sure they knew that everybody was going to be thinking, Oh, he spikes, he's going to spike that final (laughs) final shot. And then we see him take his, his own shot and go, okay, well maybe he didn't. And that, that left me enough of a doubt to go, maybe he didn't, but you know, they don't, they didn't keep us in suspense very long. They show us very quickly. uh, You know, we see Diego throwing the packages and he's like, a hundred percent. He's you know, like, as if he yeah. was like back in the day, he's like all happy about it. It's like, damn, I mean, yeah, one. Damn, yeah. And you can, you can see that he's very, <laughs> very pleased that, uh, that he's got his powers back. Um, and he doesn't know yet why, but he's just got him. He's so, he's so happy with himself. So I was, I was glad they didn't keep us in too much suspense about that. And they showed us, so I'll, I'll give him, uh, I'll give him a little bit, but you called it. They, he did spike their shots and, uh, yeah. you know, he does make a comment later in the episode about, well, maybe you guys should drink some more of it if you, and they're like, no, no, don't drink any more of it. And, uh, so <laughs> I thought that that was, that was kind of cool. But, uh, of course we see each of them, uh, with their Get powers, their powers are, back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a little bit different. Different, you know, like even Victor is it's a little bit different than what we've seen. It's a different yeah, color. The power's a little different. Um, uh like we see five bamfing and they can't figure out where he's going. 
Yeah, he's going into some sort of subway station that yep. takes him to alternate timelines. So so that's interesting. Lila uh, with the laser eyes. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really know how to how to make him work. Which was made for some hilarious moments. Uh, and I was a little worried there at first when she started shooting those laser eyes. I was like, she's going to kill one of them. If she <laughs> exactly. She's not careful, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so I was really glad that that didn't happen. But that definitely was a was a concern. But yeah, we've got yeah. a little bit different powers. We see, uh, you know, Allison doesn't have to say anything. She can just look at them. Mm-hmm. And she, she, uh, who's that, uh, Dr. Professor X, you know, she can put the thought in their head and, yep. and they do it. And you see the guy, you saw the guy's eyes go white when he turned around and shot the other people. Uh, Diego has some sort of telekinesis with his, with the bullets. I don't know that he, yeah, you know, he, he's he able to shoot the them air. out to people and yeah, stop he it jumped, like the matrix. Yeah. yeah. He jumped in the air and he did that, that, that kind of spinning motion and all the bullets spun around him and then went and shot out at the, at the guys. I was like, Whoa, that's a, that's yeah. impressive. Um, you know, and, and so, uh, we see Ben can't put the tentacles back, but he's still got some pretty good control. Cause he does, uh, kill that one, the, the one girl at the end who was pretending to be Jennifer uh, when she puts the gun to the other Jennifer's head and, yeah. and he shoots that tentacle right through her neck. And that was, whoa, I was whoa. like, whoa. Uh, but yeah, the only one that we don't get in this episode, but until the end, uh, we find out at the beginning, of course, is that Klaus didn't drink. Yeah, because he, uh, he did the typical... I'm going to throw it over my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was, that was really cool for the character because he's been so, he was so adamant about remaining yeah. sober that it really threw me off at the end of the last episode when he did drink it so quickly. I was just like, what? He's been sober for so very long and, and not, not to get into alcoholics anonymous or anything like that. But you know, yeah. if you're, if you're an alcoholic, you know, like he says in this episode, he says, you know, one drink is, is, is not enough, but two where one drink is too many, uh, two drinks is not enough or something, something like that was why yeah. he didn't do it. And that's a definitely an alcoholics, you know, mantra of, Hey, no, I can't even take one drink because if I take one drink, that's it's going to lead to the, yeah, yeah it's going to lead to the next. And, and Robert Sheehan is perfect with his mm-hmm. depiction of Klaus. And, uh, I cannot love him more of yeah. his devotion to the character and how the character is and how it's feeling. And same thing with uh, like every other character that we got, uh, like uh, David Castaneda, uh, Ritu Ara- uh, Aria, uh, who plays uh, Lila, mm-hmm. and then Tom Hopper, who plays Luther. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, we got Elliot Page and uh, all the other people. But they're very true to the characters that they have and to how they are in characteristics. So they embrace the character and they, they give it their all within the episode, which I truly enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point. And it's just like, they're very true to the character, but there's a little bit of change. Like you said, with like the, uh, the powers Mm -hmm. that they're getting, because it's not their original powers. It's their original powers enhanced. Even yeah, a more. little bit, a little bit different. Luther, like I don't remember Luther being bulletproof. Yeah. You know? Um, but yet he, and it's what's interesting to me about that scene where he does it, and I thought about it this on the second viewing today was he reacts and goes into protect mode, mm-hmm. even though he doesn't know how his body is going to react to those bullets. He Correct. just instinctively covers Protected up them. Uh, yeah, uh, Lila and um, uh. Oh, the the other girl, the why is Alice? her name is Allison? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, Allison. He automatically just just covers them. He covers then, them. Yeah, yeah, and he takes the bullets on on his back. I thought that was wow. Uh, yeah. That was really really cool. He even says it during that time. He goes, "I don't know how much more I can handle this because mm-hmm. they're literally penetrating his body at that point, and his it, it, you know, who knows how much of that graph is." you know impenetrable Mm -hmm. or penetrable who knows right yeah i don't know what we're gonna see just like we're gonna find out in the next episode klaus's reaction to having been given the miracle i mean you know 
I was again, it's another one of those things I was kind of torn about at the end of the episode. When they shoot, when the girl shoots him, you think, oh no, he's he's dead. And then Allison, you know, she doesn't pour the the marigold in his mouth, she pours it directly into on the wound. The wound, you yeah. know, which I thought was an interesting, interesting way to do it. But still, we see him come back to life, and, and in the next episode, we're gonna get to see his reaction to you know, oh, it's wait. not good, everybody. I already know. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't want this. And and even all the other characters are like, Allison was the only one saying, no, he doesn't want this. And everybody else is like, no, but you have to do it. We need him. You know, he's part of the family. And I, I loved, again, it's still one of those things that I loved. And we saw indications of it in the first episode, but really seeing it in this episode, seeing that Lila is definitely part of the family. There is oh, no, yes. there is no question she is Diego's wife. She is part of the family. She's another superpowered being, and she's she's part of their family. It's not, you know, when he says, "I need you uh, to come with with me, with us," you know, it's it's, and the rest of the family just accepts it. Um, I will, <laughs> I will uh, say, go ahead. go ahead. No, the uh, second, go ahead. You, on my you second, your my second watch, one very very tough scene to watch was mm-hmm. the vomiting. The vomiting oh. <laughs> scene in the van was very tough to watch because, it, it, particularly the second time, I had to really. I think I looked away a bunch <laughs> on the second watch because I was just like, I don't need to see this. I don't want to see it. Uh, you know, it's just everybody's throwing up and gosh, Lila what is started that? it first, but Victor said he was feeling it. Uh, mm-hmm. No, uh, no, five started saying he was. He goes, "You puke in my truck. I'm going to kill you in my van." Yeah, and yeah. then Lila started puking, and then he started, and then everybody else starting, and it's just and, like, oh my yeah. god. And the only one I'm not sure did we see did Diego throw up i don't no, remember he was seeing, at that point whether he whether <laughs> no, whether diego did or not no diego the driver he was the one driving oh diego was, oh yeah diego. at the very end he did did he at the very end okay at the okay. very end he was like mm-hmm. okay <laughs> and okay. it was like a little okay. bit so, out. so yeah it was good to, it's good as but yeah all of all of them basically just start throwing up in the van i was just like oh my gosh seriously and it's we like hear the bubbly that thing down <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, well, they must have done something because you know they had plastic over the windows when they when it drove when it drove into Santa Claus when it, when uh, they ran down the Baby Shark song. Oh the God, thing. yeah, that was something that I had in my notes too. It's like Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. It's like oh my yeah. God, the one song that you have to listen to, not even being a parent, and you know it's annoying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever actually heard the whole thing, the lyrics at least. I've heard it played, but I don't think I've ever heard the lyrics, the whole the whole runaway, the whole let's go hunt. I don't really? think I had heard that that part of the song ever before. I've just heard the different grandma and mom and pa and and or daddy and uh, I heard all those, but I don't know if I ever heard the runaway or the let's go hunt. So I, I never heard was... the runaway or let's go hunt either. Yeah. But then again, yeah, our friend Jamie Demick who uh uh, she and I covered Sam Cast and Dead Boy Detectives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she she knows it so well. <laughs> right, right. So for is sure. our, uh, friend Megan. But oh my God. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it was, uh, it was great. That. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was really cool to see that. Uh it was great uh uh, to see the them at the end where they see the Hargreaves, that they're all wearing the Hargreaves armor. So now we don't know, you know, how much what was going on? Who who is Cy Grossman with? Is he with the 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 yeah. keepers, or is he with the is he with Reggie? Is wh- who is he with? We know at the end, you know, Gene and Gene attack the the van and, and they take Jennifer off with them and they leave the rest of the family just there, which yeah. I, which is again. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to deal with that loss and how are they going to track Je- the Jennifer down now that, uh, now that they've lost her. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch the next episode. And, and definitely this episode had all the things that I had been wanting from the first episode. I was so glad that we we yeah. got it. Yeah. I, I, I The one takeaways that I was taking uh, from it too, which I thought was pretty funny too, is like Diego talking to five about Lila cheating on him, mm-hmm. not knowing that she was part of this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And then five taking the lead about the book club in the van. Yeah. And five is like, what you thought the, the you, you thought the mustache was, was bad. Oh, it was horrible. It was terrible. Must. 
and, and just us knowing that five was the one in 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 yeah. him, you know, fishing for those those really. You thought that the mustache was bad? Yeah, it was pencil thin. It was horrible. It was a terrible mustache. I thought it was was just hilarious. I thought it was hilarious, but you knew it was coming from a loving family member, mm-hmm. and obviously they're not getting involved with Lila. They're yeah. close, yes, but in a sense, but. Not romantically at no, all. No, no. It was so touching to hear to hear five, you know, kind of try to talk him down. I was saying things like, No, you guys have a family together. She's not gonna walk away from that. You've got kids, you've got a home, yeah, you've got all this, and, and really just it was really a good brother brother moment there that we we have had those in the past, but we we haven't had them recently. So it was good to see that kind of brother brother moment between uh Diego and five. S five yeah. is kind of like I said, talk kind of talking him down from no man. She's not, she's not cheating on you. She's, you know, it's, I'm sure it's just, but without also without giving her up, you know, because mm, later on yeah. she thanks five for not. She's like, thank you for not giving away what it was because five. I mean, he absolutely could have just just spilled the beans of everything right then, and and five was like, no, I, that's not that's not protocol. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give up my. Even though we see Jeannie Jean there at the end when they see her and they go, oh, Nancy, now we see. And so Nancy is outed. So I don't know if that means five is going to be uh, outed or not, uh, how that's going to how that's going to play out. Yeah, his uh, alternate I, uh, alternative identity or yeah. whatever it was yeah. for the CIO was. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was really cute, that whole uh, – and this was something that was very much important in the very beginning when they were doing promotion for the season – was Luther, Luther to actually taking the family photo by the telephone booth with everybody? It yeah, was just it was after the like, puking incident. Uh, yeah, and they're covering up their faces. And uh, it was yeah, really- I thought it was very cute. Diego in the back trying to fit in his gear like the old days because <laughs> he put on some poundage and weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah he gained the he gained the the whatever the new the new baby the new marriage whatever you want to say uh, it was the daddy the daddy fat the daddy, as, I, yeah. as I like to call it it's like he put on some poundage so yeah but he he's got his powers back so but he's starting to feel more of who he was before with mm-hmm. the umbrella academy at that time and still being a dad as he always is and loving lila yeah but, yeah for sure uh, the the one thing i really did like was the talk between victor and allison mm-hmm. and that was yes. hard to hear uh victor needed to be away and allison got what she wanted with her husband and daughter and which victor pointed out but the husband walked away mm-hmm. and yeah, but, we don't know exactly what happened there yet we have yeah we uh, still don't we know what happened that, but- we know something happened to where he's not in the picture, but she didn't tell, she didn't tell uh, Victor that. So, but that was a, yeah, you're, that was a really good conversation, particularly if you, like I said, last, last week, I rewatched the the final episode of season three and, mm-hmm. you know, Allison and Victor have this, this big argument about what, you know, Allison making that deal with Reginald. And, and mm-hmm. so in this episode, Victor, being able to go, look, I understand. I I spent the last five years building a life for myself, and him realizing that I don't want that life taken away either, and and getting getting to understand that she didn't want her life taken away. Allison didn't want her life taken away either. So I thought that was really it was a really cool moment. Again, a, a good sister brother sister moment between them as well. So we got a lot of those quiet quiet moments that uh, that I like from the series. But yeah. we also got the the great big action pieces as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do, definitely do. Uh, I love the whole Klaus in the and he's in the van while everybody else is going through their whole <laughs> issues, and he's tempting with the marigold in the van itself. Mind yeah. you, he's being tempted, and at the very end, he does get it in the end in his wound. Yeah, which, uh, it's like him dealing with his with his own addictions mm-hmm. because he wants to help, but he's like, uh, I don't know if I should. And yeah. then literally, it gets to that point where he gets shot. Yeah, and well, it, like when the when the one girl shows up and tries to get him to Jennifer. take her away, it, the fake Jennifer. Yeah, the fake Jennifer shows up first. Yes. You know, he's like, oh, I found you. I did it. I'm part of the team. And he's like, you, you realize that he thinks now, oh, I don't need my powers to be part of the team. But then, of course, that that all goes to crap because she's not the real the real Jennifer. 
and she ends up shooting him. But that that he had that moment of thinking that, gosh, I you could see it on his face, the relief of I can be part of the team without my powers, you know, um, because he's like, you know, he tells her, no, I, I can't leave because I have a, uh, you know, tendency of abandoning my post. And we yeah. know, you know, those those kind of things have haunted him for for a while. And so, again, it's funny when everybody's running up to him, start the van, start the van. You know, it was, was really very Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Start the plane, start the plane. You know? Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, uh, there there were times within the episode, if you look at Ben, mm-hmm. he's got that stupid HP Lovecraft uh, kaiju with the tentacles coming mm-hmm. down from his back because he took the marigold. Yeah, and it's his octopi squidness coming out from the back and it's just dragging constantly yeah and there's yeah, and something put wrong away. with it and there's something yeah. going wrong and i i think this ties to what's going on mm-hmm. and then we already got fake jennifer but we got the real jennifer and the real jennifer is asian just like he is mm-hmm so I, I think there's a connection there. And well, and there's that moment in the van, if you caught it, when their hands touched, when the van, when when Gene and Gene glowed. slam into the van. Yeah, their hands touch and there's like a glowing thing that happens that we don't know what the result of that is is gonna be. Is that is that something of a power that does Jennifer have a power that we're not aware of? You know, which that would make sense of why Gene and Gene were trying to find her. Mm. You know, and kind of used this is my take on it. Uh, yeah. Again, having not not watched ahead. So my kind of take on it is that Gene and Jean uh, kind of were using the the umbrellas to get to Jennifer because they couldn't get to her because she was surrounded by all those Hargreaves people. So maybe Cy Grossman does work for the the keepers and Gene and Jean. I don't know. You oh, know, because yes. he led he led them there and it was all a trap just to get the the umbrella academy basically to release get jennifer out of that so that gene and gene could take her um is that's my take on it so yeah uh, it's gonna be interesting to see we're you know we're two episodes in this is one third this season is gonna fly by you know it seems to be going really slow but it's gonna start it's gotta it's pick gonna up fly by real soon. quick yeah yeah and with only six episodes which is a little disappointing but at the same time i'm I'm kind of glad it's only six episodes uh because <laughs> like we've talked about before we've got agatha all along is, is yeah coming it's up. gonna so come around got, the corner too <laughs> we've got more stuff we've got more stuff coming down the pipe here in the next month or two that uh that we're gonna need to get caught up on so oh yeah yeah so six episodes of the umbrella academy is a is a nice nice segue to get us back into it but into a groove back yeah, into yeah. what we used to do uh, we're still doing snow piercer, everybody. So, as you mm-hmm. know, uh, Rebecca, yeah, and I, I still got to get caught up. I still got to get caught up. Yes, by he's going to get caught up I'm to the point where and... he'll jump in on the la- either <laughs> the the last or the last two episodes. Yeah, I'll try to see what I can what I can do maybe uh, with that. Uh, but but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But with, when it comes to Umbrella Academy now, um, when it comes to that. You know, we we like we said, we don't get Gene and Gene until the very end, until they mm-hmm. shoot out onto the van. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, already we already know Klaus is healed and everything, but they destroy the whole van. Yeah, so uh, it kind of leaves us off at a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. But one weird thing that I got throughout the episode, and this is in my notes, and. Uh, the Vortex Transit was on the outside of the diner. It's like a signage. Vortex Transit. Hmm. Where Ben was sitting, waiting for the bus before uh, hmm. Asian Jennifer comes out to talk to him at the diner. Right. Which is like, okay, so this is a Vortex. Mm-hmm. So this is like its own universe. And it makes me think, it's like, is that an Easter egg of some of some sort? You could tell me if I'm wrong, everybody, but, you know, I was probably reading anything. But as soon as I saw that, I was like, I had to make a note. Hmm. So tell me. But uh, other than that, that's it. All I have left is one quote. Um, yeah, I think that's, I, I just, again, I want to go just reiterate the fact that I love this episode. It had all the things that I've been wanting 
uh, mm-hmm. that I was that I missed out on in the first episode. We have the family back together. We have the powers back. So it, we're going to get to see where they're going to go from here and how that's how that's going to work. It's I'm excited to see where the rest of the season is going to go and see how they're going to play. How these how these new kind of strange powers are are going to uh, to to change their interaction or or you know see what see what happens. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for the rest of the season. I, I don't have any quotes or anything else. I think that's all that I've got, really. I think we talked about just about everything. It, that was a this is a quick discussion of this one, but it was a it yeah. was a really good episode. I'm really excited for the rest of the season. We we don't want to clutter your minds and go in depth and do an hour long podcast like always, like a lot of people do. Uh, sometimes you have to have fun with it and just uh, yeah. go with the flow. And that's literally my thoughts about things when I um, when I do these podcasts nowadays. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, I, I think uh, we we had uh, you'll you panelists will laugh because we had one pass, and Mark forgot to do what hit the record button on zoom and Rebecca was like, we had a great time for an hour and a half. And that was a great, it's like, we, we literally recaptivated it. It'll be out there. You'll hear it. Uh, but it was pretty funny though. She goes, Oh my God, you had some really good zingers. You had some really good, cool stuff. And I was like, yeah, but it was, it was actually shorter now in comparison to the uh, first pass that we did. So I think it works better. So yeah. shorter is best. I yeah, think. Sometimes, sometimes it's good. You know, uh, yeah. I, I think it works best. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, regardless of that, we'll, we're going to move on because we're going to move on to other stuff that's coming up later on. Yeah. What was so, your quote? You said you had a quote. Oh, I did. Ha- uh, yeah, I do have a quote. Uh, did you have any quotes or no? I I don't know. Just the ones that we that we've talked about that that uh, we kind of touched on already. Oh, the only I, one I found funny, honestly, was Diego saying "like a glove," <laughs> and it was uh, and Fife's like "like OJ's glove." <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> and it was, was regarding him getting back into his gear and just like pushing the fat and the heaviness yeah. of everything yeah. from his, yeah, seeing uh, the banter and the, the playfulness between the, the, the siblings was a good, you know, when, when Allison says to him, you're waddling and he says, well, I'm just trying to act like you, you know, and so oh, wow. she, she kind of kicks him in the, in the backside kind of thing. So we had that, that playful banter between them, you the know, sibling ben, banter that we yeah, all do when, when, when Ben kind of, kind of ribs her about being a B list actress. And now <laughs> that you've got your rumor power back, you won't have to be a B list. And she's like, no, I'm the head of a national campaign or whatever. You're just like, come on, it's a laundry. <laughs> it's a laundry detergent. Yeah, it literally it's, is. It's a laundry detergent advertisement. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah. Well, I, I think that about just about covers our uh, coverage on the Umbrella Academy season four, episode two. Two, yeah. Gene so, and Gene, Gene and Gene. So uh, with that, uh, I did sub- set up something for feedback. We didn't get anything, everybody, but I will always be putting this out regardless. But for you to submit your feedback, you could easily go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels you'll see the uh the image of what we're going to be covering it will tell you the episode of the show we're covering and the show itself and then you just leave the comments below and we'll read them uh if you uh it does the same for instagram because literally it's linked together so and that's at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. So it's the same thing identically. So if you actually do comment on both or one, it'll go to both. Nice. So that, that'll be appreciated if you could do that. Uh, if you want to send out a regular texted email, all you have to do is send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels. Uh, panels is spelled out to uh, panels. And then two is spelled T O pixels and the number one at gmail.com. And uh, there you could just write out a regular texted email. We'll read it. If you want to feel free and record yourself, you could do that easily. And then just send that as an attachment and we'll play it. It says if you're going to be on the podcast itself and we'll comment regarding that. It, it we, we like a lot of feedback if you can. Mm-hmm. 
uh, as always, we can be found on YouTube. So that's Panels to Pixels podcast. Keep that in mind, everybody, because uh, we do get some feedback from Josh's Panels to Pixels. That's on YouTube, but he's in England. But we are Panels to Pixels podcast. So search for Panels to Pixels podcast and you will find us and you'll see our key logo, which is created by our, uh, our great friend, Kirk Manley. And it's all red and yellow. So you could see it and you could diversify it from what Josh does. Uh, but anyhow, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow link and hit the bell to be notified when anything else comes up. It's a lot of people like to listen to the podcast through that format. And it'll be great if you can uh, also give us a thumbs up. And then if there's any feedback that you want to give, you could do that. And then we could actually read it and then, you know, read the feedback on the podcast when we do get it. So that's also another panel. But also, I would also like to like suggest that you actually do follow Josh at Panels to Pixels because he's a really good bloke and uh, he's a lot prettier than I am. He got a nice haircut. He had the li- nice long hair at one point. And he had the cool British accent. And I, I do love Josh, w- what he does, too, because he goes more in depth with the uh, the video games, the comic books, the comparisons for the comic book to the movies and the shows. Do that. Have fun. Go see what Josh is up to. And then say hello for Mark <laughs> and everybody else here from Panels to Pixels podcast. But. Other than that, that, that's the best way to get back to us. But other than that, this is our uh, coverage for the Umbrella Academy Season 4, Episode 2. Uh, next week, we'll be covering Season 4, Episode 3, The Squid and the Girl from the Umbrella Academy. Halfway through. Halfway, halfway through, through everybody. Yep. So uh, with that, I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.